What well, is up, everybody? How's it going? At the uh, editing station here mm -hmm. at Runtigan HQ. And uh, Austin came by today in between some work. And we were a little, talking a little bit about uh, the Separate Yourself series we've done. Um, a lot of the feedback we've gotten off of it. Yep. And it actually is kind of kicking into our third episode yeah. of the Separate Yourself series. And just some more information. We kind of started this series is just that information and tips and tactics and just thoughts that Austin and I have utilized in our own lives mm -hmm. for our 30 years on earth, yeah. essentially, um, that have really helped us that we feel separate ourselves, that make us different. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a key thing we know for us of importance and also for you and your success as well. Yeah, I, th I think uh, we've gotten, I don't think I know, we've gotten a lot of feedback, like you said, from, mm -hmm. from a lot of listeners, and they really like um, this series, and uh, we really appreciate that, because yeah. um, we feel like we've got some similar short stories between Jordan and I, and we feel like sharing those with people, and, and it's good to hear that people are getting something out of it, and that's really the whole purpose of the videos and the podcasts, and everything that we're doing is we're just trying to create positive stuff for everybody, so you can get something out of it, and if that means exactly. us sharing our experiences with things that have helped us see some success in life, then that's exactly what we're going to do. So uh, I, I'm excited for, for this part three. Yeah, so our first two episodes, pretty awesome. If you haven't yep. checked them out, jump back a few podcasts. Check out Separate Yourself Part 1, Separate Yourself Part 2. Yep. Uh, part three, super cool. Um, something that me and Austin have really focused on, and it is be you. Be yourself. Yes. What a key component that... It's often talked about now, which is great. It's brought up more and more. Mm -hmm. um, but what does it really mean? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Uh, you're, you're right. I see it all the time. People are like, oh, be, be you, be yourself, accept yourself, love yourself. We're seeing that a lot more, which is fantastic mm -hmm. because it's really easy to compare yourself to other people. You know, you're flipping through whatever channels it is, and you're yeah. like, I want to be like this person, I want to be like that person, you know, especially now that, like, entrepreneurship is a huge thing, it's yeah. very popular, You it wasn't back in the day, so you just have a lot of people comparing uh, different things, so I think be you is, uh, or be yourself is something that you, it, it's exactly what the words are, but, but there's ways to implement it, you know, it's so easy to say, yeah. be yourself, but... What does it really mean? What, yeah. How do you actually be yourself? How do you actually find yourself... Uh, especially in our worlds, which are two pop, very popular industries, mm -hmm. uh, the fitness industry, the health industry, and, and the outdoor industry, the growing outdoor industry, and, and then how those two industries are actually merging and how they've been merging for the last eight years. Yeah. And how do you actually find yourself and know that what you're trying to do and what you're trying to pursue is actually something you want to do and not just something that you see that looks cool. Yeah. Um, but you know, how do you actually get to that point to actually do it? Is it something that you're capable of? Mm -hmm. Is it something that would truly make you happy, or is it just something that you think looks good from from the from the cell phone screen, right? From the computer screen. I think uh, it's easy for people to find something that they love, and then they find a group, whether it's online or in person, okay. and they try to migrate to that group, and because their group is doing what they want to do, let's 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 use um, let's use outdoors like. I've hunted my entire life, so has Jordan. That's one of the many ways that we've actually met. Yeah. And so it's kind of like he and I wanted to be around each other more because we both had a passion for outdoors and fitness. Now, in my mind, I've always wanted to try to connect the two. Jordan actually had did it or had done it. He was like, I've already got season one, you know, wrapping up. And I was like, this is awesome. And so I wanted to surround myself with people more like Jordan. However, some people can have an issue where they're surrounding themselves and they change themselves. You know, they, they start to change mm -hmm. and they lose sight of what they were what they were doing. And I'm not saying that it's for the worse or for the better, but sometimes it can be for the worse where it's like they start just acting like everybody else in that group and they're not really being themselves. And then they start questioning, like, am I doing this for the reasons that I had started out before? Dude, you know what I mean? Very interesting. I never thought of it that way where you said, like, they just start attracting towards that group where they... They feel like they, that's where they want to be. Yeah. And like when you talked about that, how they actually start adjusting and changing, sometimes it can be for the better. It but can be. Oftentimes absolutely. It, it can be for the worse because it's not actually what you're truly seeking. Right. But I lo really love the point like that you're almost living vicariously. Yes. Through somebody else. Yes. Like, 
because you think that's where you should be at and what you want to do. It's like, I never really thought of it that way. And that's really interesting. Like, dude, you're living vicariously through whether it be somebody online or yep. a group that you're, you know, I think a lot of it is that group that you're trying to associate yourself with online, um, but in person as well. Yeah, because I think you want to surround yourself with people that are doing what you're doing. I have always said that I will surround myself with hardworking people. That's just how I grew up. Every single human being in my mm -hmm. family knew nothing but hard work. And so, you know, going through high school and college, you hang out with different groups of friends, but then you start realizing that person works hard, that person works hard, we have the same interests, we start to connect, we start to hang out, we start yeah. to get together. So I'm not saying that it's a bad thing because your hard work rubs off. And, and sometimes if you have somebody that's better than you at something and they work hard as well and, and you get a connection with them, that can make you better. Yeah, for sure. But at the same time, like you were saying earlier, like sometimes it just turns into people living vicariously through others. And then that's where it's like, are you really being yourself or are you starting to change yourself because you're like, well, I wanted to get in the fitness industry and I want to change and impact people's lives like this. But now I just don't really know. Like I found this cool group of people and they do fitness, but they do it a different way. And we've seen that a ton because we've managed gyms. Yep. Uh, we've hired trainers. We've mm -hmm. worked with a lot of trainers over the years. And we have seen that where, you know, you interview people and they're like, you know, why do you want to be in the, why do you want to be a personal trainer? And a lot of times that answer is, dude, I just, I love working out. Yep. And, I, I just, I just want to help people. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, you're gonna find out within six months of being a personal trainer that, right. like, do you better love working, mm -hmm. not, not just working out. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna make this a full time gig yes. for a lot of years, mm -hmm. there's just so much more passion that that is involved with that as there is every single other industry you're looking for. Absolutely. Um, and you know what? You're you're gonna get attracted to those certain things at times and find out that you're not happy right. in them. That's okay. You tried something. You eliminated that, or you can find another route to something different. Exactly. Um, but don't ever feel like you have to be trapped there, right? Because you still need to seek out to be yourself. Yeah, uh, that's a great point. Because sometimes I think people lose themselves by just settling. Uh, so yeah. you don't have of, to try one thing, right? So you tried one thing because you're passionate about fitness, and you're like, well, I'm passionate about fitness, but putting all of my energy into other people is difficult for me. So, you know, and, and sometimes people then are like, well, I don't want to seem like I failed, so, like, I'm just going to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're kind of losing yourself. Like, if you got into something to truly help people, it might not be the fitness. It might be something else. There's other ways that you can reach so out. So many ways to help people. You're right. Right. So you start losing yourself a little bit. So I think uh, a big thing is, is um, and there's so many things, let's keep utilizing yeah. that fitness industry. You want to be involved in the fitness industry. Think about all the other avenues you can be in right that maybe aren't necessarily direct with people mm -hmm. whether it be maybe you're working for a supplement company maybe yep. you're working uh the back side of a bigger box gym yeah where you're you're doing paperwork you're doing you're doing all their back file yeah. work things like that um you're doing their promotionals there's you're doing this you're you're doing these you're kind doing of things this. with one-on-one yeah. -on -one with people maybe you're better with one-on-one -on -one versus right. group settings yeah um you know, maybe you're working for an apparel company in the fitness industry. So yeah. step back and think about, okay, I love this industry, but I don't love, I'm frustrated with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not allowing me to be me. Well, right. you've got to go back, you know, to our beginning podcast where we talk about that self-awareness and you really have to just test yourself and audit yourself and figure out, okay, well, what does make me happy? Yes. And then find that avenue within that industry that you can be happy and, and try out that new thing so you can be yourself and truly be authentic to yourself. Yeah, uh, uh, being authentic to yourself it, it is huge. It's easy to lose that, like we've been saying this whole time. And um, like Jordan said, going maybe back a few podcasts and starting from the beginning and then listening all the, through, all the way through up to this one, being yourself and trying to apply those things. Or you might be in the moment right now as you're watching this yeah. and going through those previous podcasts and listening to this, you might have to just step back and say, am I still being myself? Am I still Jordan that started this journey from day one, from season one, we're going to am I still Austin who set out to do, you know, these things to help impact people's lives um, through just different education channels? Like, are we still being the same people? Are you still being the same person um, who set out this journey? And if the answer is no, then again, audit yourself, mm -hmm. be self-aware. It's very easy to lose yourself, especially in, you know, big industries and popular in the, in, industries. Yes, in the world today. Um, you know, that's the one thing that 
I feel like we've done really well with ourselves, um, especially in the run to gun side of things on the on the outdoor world, fitness yeah. world, is that when we started the TV show when we were doing this, there was nothing else out like this. There was nothing. Now there's a ton of it. Mm -hmm. um, and we were starting to film this TV show, and season two, my brother took over all the production. And at first, I was like, you can go back and watch our season one. Yep. And we were doing these, you know, uh, production, post-production stuff, interviews, just like every other TV show. And I'm like, I, I didn't know any other way to film a show. Because that's mm -hmm. all I had watched growing yep. up. And I was like, but I knew that I didn't like it. Right. I watched it, I'm like, I just don't like this. I don't know what to do differently. Mm -hmm. And... My brother took over production for season two, and I was like, dude, you should watch this show and this show. And he was like, dude, I don't want to watch the show. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, like, dude, but you probably need to see how outdoor TV, like, is produced. And then, like, when I said that out loud to him, I was like, no, don't go watch the shows. Like, right. I don't, like, I don't want you to watch hunting TV. And I'm like, I'm done watching hunting outdoor TV. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I don't have a lot of hours under my belt in the last five years of hardly any outdoor television. Because when I said that out loud to my brother, it just finally clicked to me what he was saying, like, and it was just kind of an accident that, dude, no, like, in order for us to be us, I don't want to watch anything else. Right. Like, I want us to be us. Exactly. And and so, literally, don't watch any, hardly any other content like that. Matthew doesn't watch any other content like that. He watches cinema movies and things like that. Yep. And, and so, our TV show is completely different mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah, you, know you I mean? created uh, that, uh, you were self-aware when yeah. you talked to Matthew, and then you audited yourself by going back and, and watching those videos, yes. and then you all of a sudden applied and went back to being, being exactly. you. And so for me, what I've learned, for me to be true to myself and really bring out who I am within my business, mm -hmm. is that I know I can't watch other things, because I don't right. want to look like it, mm -hmm. I don't want it to, I don't, I don't want to sound like it, right. and I don't want there to be any quote-unquote inspiration from something else pulled into my own project right I want my project to be my own inspiration exactly how I see it in my own mind right and in that in turn makes me stick out whether I'm only sticking out to myself or whether right. I'm sticking out to other people I mean I know over the years we have stuck out to other people just because of the feedback yeah in absolutely. The, in, the, in the difference and so there's always those times of discouragement and and where you're just feeling bummed out and it's getting long is it actually working but I think that's actually like Dude, those are, doesn't mean it's not working. I just think those are the grind times. Like, yeah, absolutely. You gotta be okay with the, the in the gutter times where you're just putting in the work. And I think that's where, because you want to keep it authentic, and as you should, like, we should want to be authentic in our own ways. But like you said, it's it would be easy to pull up, you know, some outdoor shows and be like, okay, let's see what some of these people are mm -hmm. doing, you know, because there's something to be said about staying with the times, but also, you know, it can hinder you, and you gave a great example, like yeah. because you don't want to see that because it may inspire you to put something. But now it's not being original; it's not something that exactly. you created. Exactly. And it goes back to you know, with us talking about all of this as being you. It's easy to get into an industry. We'll use the fitness industry because that's what you know we're big with the fitness industry. That's what we are in, and so you you have a specific area in the fitness industry, and that's what you want to do. So you go and join these groups and you do these things and you got into the fitness industry for this reason but all of a sudden you start hanging out with this group now this group's doing that thing and you're getting the same idea but yeah. is that idea keeping you on the path of which you were intended yeah. to go or are you starting to go over on a different path and is that the right path for you and are you truly being yourself are you sticking with yourself like what are you you know what are you doing yes i use the term quote unquote inspiration but you're utilizing it in the sense of yeah is are those people you're around pulling you away from your original ideas mm -hmm and hindering you from actually executing on those your original ideas and what yes. what you believed in and now you know sometimes you're on those other people and it almost like discourages you from thinking that your ideas are that good or right. you should be executing them right. like no like those are golden those are golden you have to execute on those were your those were your babies you know like right. go after it and like yes we talked about how you know my my back in the past how we kind of set those tones of how we want to stay original for Austin the fitness industry like how you did you like you were in the bodybuilding industry mm -hmm. that is like especially in Sioux Falls area here was definitely known for like NPC like a lot of guys juicing up mm -hmm. like you know a certain way of dieting a specific way like only eating chicken and rice mm -hmm. and broccoli and like no carbs when you get close to show and then you have Austin <laughs> I, I just wanted to when I because honestly I, I wanted to coach bodybuilders 
it was still kind of a new thing when I started out. Like, there wasn't a lot. There was a couple, you know, coaches that did things online, mm -hmm. but there just wasn't a ton out there. And uh, I certainly tried the chicken and rice and yep. eating the same four foods. Like, and I did that back in wrestling. So, like, it wasn't hard for you. It was day. just, it was just what I knew. But then right. I started reading different research, and then I started finding a group of people that started asking questions, and they were getting ridiculed for asking those questions. Well, why do we have to eat this? Why can't we eat this instead? Which almost the same thing it's just a different and they weren't getting real answers right they weren't getting real answers but then again like you were saying like there's groups that they don't think these ideas are great because maybe they couldn't find the answers to them or you know it wasn't what they knew because they only knew of a specific way but then there's also a group out there who like they just dared to ask the questions mm -hmm. they dared to do the research and i was like i like where this group is going so you know i decided myself to go back to school and find out more information and surround myself with other groups of people who were digging into the research of, you know, is there more efficient ways than just eating four foods to get ready for a show? And we found the answer was, yes, there are more efficient ways. And that it's can just... Can you do it by not eliminating food groups? Right. Can you do it? Yeah. Can you do things differently? And I know it sounds basic because people will probably think, well, yeah, you should be able to do it differently. But then at that time, it was just... At the time, it was not normal. No, it wasn't normal. And, and, and just like Jordan said earlier, your thoughts and ideas to a specific group may not be normal. You know, you may be discovering something new that could be awesome and fantastic, and people shooting you down... A lot. And that can affect you in making you um, change into just being more like that group because, you know... It's just easier. Because you are vulnerable. Right. Because you're new within the industry and you want to fit in. Right. But you should actually want to be a black sheep. Oh, absolutely. And we're going to yes. get on get in on that mantra yeah. later on again. Yes. But, like, you should want to be a black sheep in yeah. your industry. Yes, you should. I mean... In it, life. In life. Like, I remember when I started competing, like, I wanted to find people. But, again, it wasn't really that popular here in Two Falls at the time. Like, you know, there's just a few people that competed in the past. So, I would ask them for help about posing and stuff. But they were kind of just in and out of things and so I would try to read online and talk to people that were currently competing and doing things and so like I guess where I'm going with this is like I wanted to kind of find my group but there wasn't a lot of people at the time and now there's a lot more competitors and the sports grown a lot around here same thing with powerlifting because I enjoy powerlifting and bodybuilding like that sports grown tremendously yeah not even just in South Dakota but just you know Everywhere. in the country and uh so I guess again where I'm going with this is it's just I, I wanted to find a group, but at the same time, I didn't... I've always struggled with this. I've never always wanted to be like other people. I just... I found that I never was anyways, so... And it's yeah. just really exhausting to try to be like other people. It is. And so, I I would just rather be someone that... I just... I've always wanted to get information like, why? Why this? Why that? And, and that makes you different. When you start asking a lot of questions, I know it comes across as doubt to some people, but... You're just trying to find out information and... and if, you're, you're growing in yourself. Yeah. And you're figuring yourself out. And that's that's how you're going to become you. Yes. That's how you're going to become confident in yourself and not caring mm -hmm. about what other people think of you, what other, pe what other people think about what your venture is, mm -hmm. what, your, what your job you're trying to go after, what business you're trying to start, you know, how you raise your kids. Yeah. The girl that you want to date but you're too afraid because your friends are going to make fun of you. Right. Whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, you were literally hindering happiness you are you like, are by not being yourself yes and chasing you would rather things. it be easier to fit in with that group than be you or be yourself when you have to you know if you, i it struggle sounds super with this. exhausting it does it sounds super, <laughs> you're, you you don't want to be yourself because you are concerned that you found this group you don't want to leave this group you're afraid they're going to be uh you know not accepting of your thoughts and ideas and then it's kind of like are they your friends? Are they the right people to be your? Yeah. So, I mean, the difference is, is like, Jordan and I, we're always being ourselves, but we're swapping ideas. We give constructive criticism if we like mm -hmm. something or don't like something. And, like, that's the difference. Like, we can still walk away and be like, okay, I see where Jordan's coming yeah. from. I see you where I'm have to agree with everything. No. That's a kind of group that you need to find. It's hard to find yeah. those groups. Dude. Well, otherwise, people are just gonna be like, no, Jordan, I don't like that. You should actually, you know, these hunting shows are doing these big things. You need to be doing right. stuff like that. And then you're going to look at me like, why? <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to look at him the same way. Like, no, Austin, you need to be coaching people like this because this is what a lot of the top coaches right now in the country are doing. And I'm going to be like, well, why? That's why? not me. That's not you. Right. You know? Dude, and I will be 100% honest. Like, when I started running on back when I was 22 or 23, whatever it is, I just turned 30. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... There were so many things in my head 
and so many things I wanted to go do and so, right. so many social media posts I wanted to do and different projects I wanted to work on, promotions right. I wanted to do and right. all these all these ideas that I never did because, and I didn't know it at the time, I was afraid about what people back small town Myrtle would think mm -hmm. if I did this or that. And dude, it totally held me back and I just figured it out six months leading up to my birthday in July where I turned 30. It was like a light switch. Yep. It was just like, all of a sudden I realized like, dude, why am I not doing this, this, and this that I've been wanting to do for the last six years, five years, whatever it is. And it was like, it just like, I finally hit this new stage of self-awareness, new right. stage of growth mm -hmm. where I was like, dude, why the heck would you care what the heck somebody else thought? Like, right. Dude. And like, literally it was just like, I jumped on and I vlogged that day. Mm -hmm. Always wanted to do a vlog, never did it because I was too afraid of what people would think about me. Thought I was like, oh, people think I'm self-absorbed and right. doing this. And so many things I didn't film in the gym because I'm like, dude, so people think I'm just a D-bag filming myself with this. But they don't understand the context behind it. Right. What am I doing that for? Actually, I'm doing it to help some people with three different ideas of what they can do for some hip mobility so mm -hmm. they can take away some back pain and hip pain. Absolutely. Like, things like that where it's like, okay, cool. People don't know me. They don't understand the context behind it. So why care what they think? Right. If they do want to know, they'll come and ask. Yes. Or they'll follow my channel. And so it's just like, dude, I stopped self like evaluated myself and it was like dude stop caring yeah and then i think about okay what i've done in the last six months with run again for growth and i'm like i wish i could have that back mm -hmm. i wish i could take that back five years and do that where would i be at now with my company where would we be at right you know what i mean and so taste of regret right there mm -hmm. you know where it's like i wish i would would wouldn't have cared yep wish i would have just went for it and believed in myself a little bit and so all part of finding me all part of finding yes. you yes on what you have to do i think that's a huge component is just you gotta just not care yeah you gotta you stick gotta to yourself stick to you jordan and i are on the same page like you should have your own life mission or mission statement about yes. your life and you gotta like bring that up from time to time or have your own life mantra you know jordan's uh live beyond the confines of average and mine's trained to be a champion every single day like we always want to win the day based on our goals and, you know, sometimes it's easy, like Jordan's saying, to get lost. Like, I remember, and I didn't even know Jordan, I remember people would think that there's no way fitness and hunting could be a thing. Yeah. Like, they, people were like, there's no way that that would be successful. Like, yep. hunters are too stubborn. They don't care. Jordan came along, and I didn't know anybody that was doing um, a show or any sort of thing that was fitness and hunting related. And he came out, and he started doing it. And, I mean, you train a ton of people online that are getting ready for hunts, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't have been a, th it, it would never have worked yep. because it was new because somebody else hadn't came up with that idea yet. Oh, and I told people about this at hunting mm -hmm. industry shows that I went to and would talk to people at a booth or at a bar or whatever yep. it is. And it's just like, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, like nobody cared. Like dude, old, old pheasant hunter dudes don't want to get in shape. Yep. Most don't. Right. Don't care. Yep. <laughs> like they don't care until the health problems kick in. In the day after, when they hunt for two days, and they're so on a, a two-day cornfield hunt, and they can't hunt the second day because they're too tired from walking for two hours on mm -hmm. day one. Like they don't care until then. Right. And then who do they turn to? Exactly. So it's just one of those things. Like you know, not a lot of people believed in what I wanted, what I right. saw. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And but that again it goes back to that whole like, when are you at your best? It's when you're getting beat down, and it's when you're at the bottom, and it's when nobody believes in you, because that's when I work the hardest. Yes. Right? That's when you work the hardest. It is. is when everybody's like, no, Austin, like, what are you doing going to school to go get to be a dietitian? Like, right. dude, you can't do that. You're not smart enough to do that. Whatever mm -hmm. it is. Oh? Yeah. Like, I, really? I, okay, because I, I know me. I know, like, you know you. You know yourself. Yep. Like, cool. Like, I'll, I'll do this for me and get the satisfaction of proving you wrong. At exactly. the same time. <laughs> no, it's amazing how that happens. I yeah. Mean, and I've gotten stuff like that too. Uh, like, you know, Jordan was saying about bringing up with, uh, you know, being one of the originators of fitness and hunting. Like it was the same thing when I started getting into coaching, because again, the only people I had talked to said the same thing, just eat the chicken rice. Okay, cool. It's just like I did in wrestling. Like I regret that because I wish I would have found other people, not just locally to talk to, but out, you know, outside of the local community and the yeah. powerlifting and bodybuilding. And I did. I just found it a little bit later than I would have liked to. If I would have went back, it would have been, you know, I should have just reached out to some other people earlier. But, again, it's just something where I had to take a step back and be like, I'm just being like everybody else. I'm not truly happy doing it. Like, I enjoy 
bodybuilding and powerlifting, but I'm just doing the same things. Yeah. But then again, like I went and found other people. And I'm like, I like what this is about. This makes sense. There's efficacy there. There's research there. And so, you know, started going back to school, started getting multiple different certifications just so I could, you know, learn as I'm learning, just kept trying to grow and be better. And then I started bringing that back to some of my clients. And then you kind of start to get some feedback, like, why are you having him do this for you? This doesn't make sense. You're going to, you know, get bloated or look soft on stage, or you're going to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden my clients are like, no, I feel great. I look fantastic. It's the best shape I've ever been in. And they placed well at their shows. I'm stronger than I was the last they time. They perform show. way better in the <laughs> yeah. gym. And it's kind of just like, there's always going to, our point is there's always going to be resistance to new ideas and new things. And my thing was never a new idea. It's stuff that I learned from other people. It was just new to South Dakota. So new here. It was so new here. Um, but it definitely wasn't, you know, wasn't, it wasn't created here by any means. There's so many different research people out there that have discovered, mm -hmm. um, more efficient ways of eating and performance. Um, it's just when we bring it some, takes those people to believe in it, to carry it out and to deliver it. Cause to those new... people got beat down too with oh, their man. ideas. And yeah. I think that's what attracted me is I know, I know that a lot of researchers get a lot of flack because there's like, there's no way this can be a thing, but they spend the hours okay. and put in and they find the research and they get the results. And, and so anyways, it's just, both stories for Jordan and I, just to give you guys different viewpoints of like, we've been there, we've had people not believe yeah. in our ideas, we've had people not believe in the things that we've we've said, and it's gut wrenching. I'm not gonna sit here and tell mm -hmm. you that I was like, okay, no, it, it affected me. There'd be times where I would get upset, yeah. I would get frustrated. I'm not one to speak out about it. I'll just do my thing. Yeah, there's and, more days that I've wanted to quit than keep going. Right. You know what I mean? There's so you know, it's in the six years, whatever, mm -hmm. seven years of working on this stuff, like a lot of days where you're just like is it worth it yeah you wake up and you're like what am i doing mm -hmm. right now like but like, do, do, those are the thoughts that you cannot let dictate no like, and like you cannot you said, let those first thoughts dictate your actions like, yeah and when it happens when those thoughts do come like you said like that's almost when we perform at our best it's like why yeah. are these thoughts in my head right now like and that's when you're gonna know whether you're doing the right thing yeah because you're gonna question yourself like you're gonna have those times where it's really hard and you're going to question it and be like, is this where I'm supposed to be? Am I truly happy doing this? And then you really have to stop and think like, okay, like, do I perform at my best when I'm right here at, you know, at the bottom, back up against the ropes, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And then if it is when you perform your best and then you think back of like when you're really happy and you're working on those things, that's when you know you're doing the right thing. Now, right. if you're truly not happy and like it's making you miserable going about it, doing it, like you're losing sleep, you have anxiety about it, and you're just mm -hmm. like, you're seriously like miserable. Like you cannot be happy doing it. They're right. like, yeah, you gotta go do something new. Yeah, you gotta try something different. You know what I mean? Like, cause mm -hmm. I've gotten that question like, well, yeah, I got, I don't know what to do in life, whatever it is, and like, I've tried this, and I've tried that, like, or I'm working on this, but I don't, I'm not that great, like, I'm not where I wanna be at. Like, mm -hmm. okay, well, it's great if you're not where you wanna be at, it's okay. Like, great right. things take time, great things take hard work, but like, are you getting happiness from it? If you right. are, I, I'm just a believer, like, if you're getting happiness from it, you're on the right path and you're doing right. the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm a believer, like, if you're not, like, and it's making you miserable and you don't want to do the work, then, dude, you got to find something else. Yeah, you got to find you something gotta go else. you got to dip your fingers in something new. Right. But you got to do it, and you can't, you know, put one toe in the water and take it back out. you gotta, yeah. you got to make that jump. Dude, I love that. That's actually true. Like, yeah, you got to go for it or not. Yeah. Like, you can't play around and think, like, yeah, this kind of makes me happy. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. playing around with anything makes you happy playing yeah. light matches a little bit makes you happy until you burn your house down <laughs> well, that's true. That's <laughs> like true. <laughs> you know like you have to really you have to commit to some things you do and uh and uh whether that's going to be a side hustle you have to commit to that being your side hustle and those hours are your side hustle mm -hmm. you know or yep. whether you're going to go for a full-time gig like you make right. it that full time like you mm -hmm. focus on that yep um and that's just a big part of finding you it's just really that self-evaluation and chasing that happiness mm -hmm. and not caring at all like what people think, and it's going to be hard. Like you right. said, there's going to be the gut-wrenching times. There's going to be the challenge, like way more challenge than than successes where you're celebrating. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just a big believer in the the challenge of it, that process that we talk about, that season two mantra of Running yeah. Gun, that enjoy yeah. the process, love the journey. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it for five years. It's always going to hold true. Yeah, it yeah. just, the real is real, and that's just what it is. It is. You know, so. find your mission, find your life's mission Ooh, statement. Mission statement's huge. And, and stick with it and, and, and be you and, you know, be self-aware, self-audit frequently. And, you know, make sure you just don't change who you are unless 
it's going to affect you for the positive way, and it's living your life's mission statement. But then you're changing to who you actually should be. Exactly. That's who you actually are. Right. Right. So go for it. I hope this podcast helped a little bit. I hope just our stories, our little bit of just talking mm-hmm. helps you out and gives you some courage to go be you.